Hello guys, Sumha Cookies here. Ever since the presentation of Mortal Kombat 1 at Summer Game Fest, we have had gameplay, roster development, and people getting their hands on time with the game, and so much more. So today, we're going to cover everything we know about Mortal Kombat 1 up to this point. First, let's go ahead and start with the story. Since this is the thing touched on the most in recent interviews with Ed Boon and their FAQ, we're going to go ahead and rush through the general stuff. After Mortal Kombat 11 and its Aftermath DLC, Liu Kang and Raiden fused and created Fire God Liu Kang. After thwarting Kronika and Shang Tsung, Fire God Liu Kang decides the best way to preserve the peace is to start the world anew and watch over the realm to keep things peaceful. Due to the timeline reset, a lot of what we know about the story and characters of the Mortal Kombat universe are thrown out the window as there are new major canon events that have and will happen throughout the story of this timeline. From the cutscenes shown to us so far, and the character clash conversations that people have recorded by getting an opportunity to record gameplay thanks to an invite from Warner Brothers, we know that even though Sub-Zero and Scorpion seem to be helping Liu Kang in stopping whatever threat is rearing its ugly head this time in the Mortal Kombat universe, Sub-Zero will eventually be revealed to ultimately be going against our main group of characters as he has a negative dialogue with the likes of Liu Kang and Katana during the brief character clashes shown after selecting a character in the character select screen. Your actions cost lives, Bihan. They were in the Lin Kuei's best interests. Your clan used to serve a noble cause. It is better now that we serve ourselves. Along with this, other tidbits we know from the trailers are that somehow Johnny Cage gets a hold of Kenshi's blade. What do you want? Sento. It's my family blade. Sento's mine. Katana is no longer the Princess of Adenia, but it is Melina, and apparently she isn't just some experiment from Shao Kahn or whoever the Khan is of the realm, but somehow got some sort of disease that makes her turn into the Melina we know with the crazy teeth. If your disease becomes known, you will be banished. I only want what's best for you. Or do you secretly covet my throne? Raiden is now a human in this timeline. Oh, he's the young... <laughs> You know, farmer. Like yeah, yeah, he's like this young kid. And As the god of the realm is now Fire God Liu Kang, Kenshi is in fact still the blind swordsman, as there were some people, me included, who thought that this was a son or a Kenshi who might have had sight. But apparently, we will finally find out how he got blinded, as this was teased by Ed Boon himself in the Brian Tong interview. It's cool to see these characters like new origin stories. And so you'll see things like how Kung Lao came up with the idea for his his hat and and how you know how you know how Kenshi got blinded and stuff yeah, actually yeah. nobody knows of it. uh that that's gonna be in there in the Danny Pena interview with Ed Boon he mentions that Liu Kang will have the knowledge of wrongdoings and events going on behind the scenes from recollections of his old timeline and hints at the part where Quan Chi and Shang Tsung team up in Deadly Alliance so it is possible we could be spanning the enemies of the first five games if this is to be believed, and possibly in rapid fashion, that way the new main antagonist can take the majority of the stage. And he's using that knowledge sometimes. You know, that's that's part of the fun of, of this story mode is he's going to see Shang Tsung taking a path and he goes, wait a minute, I know what he's I know the, the damage that he's done in the in the previous timeline. Also gonna be remembering Oh, that's right. These two teaming up here is going to be something that's going to be, you know, so it's 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 very cool how we have all these nods to the previous games. Along with this, a main storyline being teased is Melina contracting a disease known as Tarkat, meaning that the Tarkatans are now a disease and not a race. To me, it seems to be a mix of leprosy and vampirism, but we don't know anything concrete for now. And now, they're trying to see how they can cure Melina and try to save her from her fate and keep her from being exiled from the throne. We also know that one of the major plot points is General Shao, or Shao Kahn, is being manipulated by Shang Tsung who is playing to his vanity and saying he is the only person who can save Outworld. And some way or another, this leads to Shao Kahn trying to usurp the throne from what we heard during the cutscene with Li Mei and Liu Kang in the exclusive to the people at the San Diego Comic Con panel for Mortal Kombat 1. Now, let's move on to the confirmed roster we know so far from the game. Assuming the character and cameo select screen isn't a red herring and is the true number we are getting, we will be having 24 actual characters and 16 cameo characters in the roster. So far confirmed for the main line are Liu Kang, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, Raiden, Kung Lao, 
Katana, Melina, Shang Tsung, Johnny Cage, and that's just from the FAQ. Along with that, during gameplay showcases we have seen Kenshi as well, which makes 10 out of 24 total slots on the main roster. On top of that, during the very first combat cast, we got to see Rain and Smoke also revealed to be main characters. After that, during the Umgadi trailer that recently came out during San Diego Comic Con, we see the characters Lee Mei, Tanya, and Baraka all as main playable characters as well, bringing the total up to 15 out of the 24 characters revealed so far for the main roster. In the cameo side of things, we have Sonya, Jax, Kano all shown from the gameplay shown at Summer Game Fest. With the trailer at the same event, they also showed Striker, Goro, and Kung Lao as cameo characters as well. Along with this, we also know that Scorpion and Sub-Zero are said to appear as cameos from Ed Boon himself in the Brian Tong interview. Uh, Sub-Zero and Scorpion are going to be in both rosters and stuff like that, but not every character, but, but that's going to be fun. Finally, through the combat cast, we had Cyrax, Frost, and Sector as cameos in the Lin Kuei trailer, and in the Umgadi trailer, we had a reveal for Darius, which totals the confirmed cameo characters up to 12 out of the 16 revealed so far, and the last bit of official news to come out of San Diego Comic Con was a trailer for the first combat pack, which contains Quan Chi, Ermac, Takeda, Omni Man, Peacemaker, and Homelander. It is worth mentioning the Comic Con panel itself had cutscenes shown to people at the panel name dropping General Shao or Shao Kahn, showing off Reiko and Mataro, and teasing a winged fighter who everyone believes to be Natara. Also, Lady Chameleon is shown in the Umgadi trailer, but all characters listed just now aren't known whether they would be cameo, full playable roster characters, or just exclusive to the story mode. One final note on roster characters for this game would be that Shang Tsung is a pre-order bonus, which will eventually lead to a viable DLC after release. Not exactly a character per se, but Johnny Cage will have a fully voiced and skinned John claude Van Damme skin as well. Also, on the note of doubling up, if you pick Sub-Zero as a character, you will not be locked out of picking the same person as a cameo as well if the opportunity is there. You can use them all the same, no matter the character selected. So, you could have the Sub-Zero character and the Sub-Zero cameo both selected at the same time. Ed Boon also stated in his Brian Tong interview that the 3D era of characters, so Deception, Armageddon, and Deadly Alliance would have some pretty good representation, and that some of the cameo characters would be deep cuts from the franchise. Some of these being possibly obscure, unplayable characters of the past, and a lot of people are suggesting the boss characters of previous games, and meat and mocap from the meme side of things. As we got to see in the Umgadi trailer that came out during Comic Con, we saw that the 3D era in fact did have great representation from the old 3D era of games for MK, with the likes of Lee Mei, Tanya, and Darius all being revealed in that event. In the Danny Pena interview, Ed Boon also stated that some cameos will be campaign only ones and not a part of the official roster for gameplay. A number of, of, of cameo characters in the campaign that are exclusive to the campaign. On top of this, in Character Clashes we have two characters name dropped that are a part of the lore, apparently in Character Clash on the character select screen. If you have Liu Kang and Ken Chi, Liu Kang mentions Ken Chi's wife Su Chin, and when you have Liu Kang and Katana, he mentions to keep Mistress Jade close. So a big Jade reference there. Keep Countess Jade close. She is critical to your future. Is it possible you could be more cryptic? Su Chin wants me back. You made as strong an impression as she did. If I had to throw a pretty easy prediction in the ring, I would assume that as an homage, we could expect to see the full character roster of the original Mortal Kombat in here, and seeing as most of them are already confirmed, it's not too far off to think that Kano and Sonya could appear as playable characters as well. Now, Reptile is special. He is a secret character only fightable in the original game as an easter egg, so the jury is still out on that one for me, as it's tough to say if they would add him in as he was just an easter egg fight and not a character in the main game of the roster, right? Now let's start touching on the gameplay of the game. In the words of people who were invited to play the game and are pretty well known and respected for being able to do more than just hold their own in fighting games, those people being Justin Wong and Maximilian Dude, the game seems to let you be free flowing and lets you combo almost anything as long as you can get the timings down 
and you have the resources to do so. This is exactly that, where it's like, okay, we have a grounded footsie fighting game, but it's fucking nuts. <laughs> like, <laughs> here's all this crazy shit the cameos do, here's the characters, they're, they're kitted beyond belief. For this game, as well as the cameos, we said, let's loosen the reins. Let's really let the player, if they can think of it, you know, chances are they can do it, right? And they mentioned that during their playtesting of Mortal Kombat 11, they played it for about 30 minutes to an hour and they felt they had a real grasp of how the game was meant to be played, but with the 40 minutes to an hour they got with Mortal Kombat 1, they said they couldn't get enough and they just wanted to keep labbing because they could do so much more and there was so much potential for combos and it looks very versatile and open-ended for sure. The game is pretty straightforward in the fact that it has the usual UI elements as most fighting games with a health bar at the top and an enhanced meter for some of your special moves towards the bottom, but right below your health bar you now have a circle bar, and when filled halfway and fully, you are able to activate your cameo fighter you selected to join the battle for a move out of them. Cameo characters are versatile assists that are added to Mortal Kombat depending on the cameo character you choose, they all so far seem to have completely different assists and their meter regenerates over time after being used. Cameos can further damage opponents to extend a combo, bounce them up for a juggle to set up for a combo, interrupt the enemy for a combo breaker, or interrupt them before they even get a move off to create an opening. A further use we see in the combat cast trailer is that certain cameos will have zoning uses. A cameo like Kung Lao can teleport you closer to an opponent, while one like Scorpion can use his spear to pull you back almost a full screen worth of movement. Lastly, I know a known interaction I've seen is they come on screen to do a move, get hit, and are essentially wasted since they got hit before their move came out. The shoulder button used to call in a cameo seems to do something different for every combination with a direction you push it in as well. So left and the button to send them out will do something completely different than right and the button to send them out. Along with this, every cameo fighter shown so far has had vastly different movesets, and don't seem to nearly do the same thing with a different skin, at least as what we've seen from them as of yet. So as far as we know, combo possibilities are already more than they've ever been in a Mortal Kombat game. If what people who've had their hands on are to be believed, and with different types of cameo characters in the mix as well, the combo possibilities could be endless. From what the people who got the playtest said, and what we can see from all the gameplay shown by them from Warner Brothers at Summer Game Fest, it looks like the cameo fighter system adds vast amounts of versatility to the game and is a welcomed addition to Mortal Kombat. Along with this, certain moves can now start juggles or combos without having to expend meter to do so. From the Summer Game Fest trailer gameplay, you can see Scorpion set up a combo without any visual indication of using a single bar of the enhanced meter in the gameplay, and some characters can meter burn some combos over and over again as long as they have the meter to do so. This was shown off by Maximilian Dude in his showcase video of his gameplay session. In, in Mortal Kombat and NRS games previously, when you meter burn like an attack or use an attack that puts an enemy in a state, yep. you can only do it once yep. in, in previous games. And in this game, you can do it like, I think you might be trying it here. You can do it like multiple times. Yeah, you can loop it. So that new move that sub Zero has kind of reminds you of Scorpion's Inferno. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you can loop the enhanced version three times. So he has loops. Yes. In, the, in, in, in this version, so it's possibly it's one bar. other character. It, yeah. co it costs one bar each, so it'll stop, right? That's you eventually, speed. yeah, can only do it so much. So that's your this allows you to keep a combo extended as long as possible. Along with this, Maximilian Dude mentioned that a dev told him while he was playing that if you pressed up while blocking, it does a timed upward block for enemies looking for a jump in, and if timed right, creates a window for you to punish. They added a system where if you time this, it's risk. It's risky for each side because you can empty yeah. jump. Like all there, there is, it yeah. isn't free. Yeah, and there's recovery. And there's recovery. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, you get an up block, and you, 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 they're getting punished. But if you hit the up block, it says you hit it, and you just get like plus frames like out the ass when they hit the ground. So is there a new version of uh, flawless block? Oh, it's not. Right. Flawless block is still here. It's still yeah. here. But it doesn't change any frame data. Okay. Yeah. Guess what it does now? Less chip damage. No chip damage. No yeah, chip damage. Negates chip damage. So now it's a complete. Complete chip damage negation. Flawless block is still in the game, but it doesn't actually like give you plus frames or allow you to do anything so after. It's kind of like a parry now. It essentially is a parry. Yeah. Characters will now also be able to do death blows as some sort of tag team attacks with their cameos as well. Along with this, cameo characters can also be used to execute their own fatalities. Each cameo character is confirmed to have one fatality, which is usually one of their older ones if applicable, 
if they were a playable character before. This was revealed in the Ed Boon Danny Pena interview. Now, also with cameos and also the regular characters for Taz, he's also included in there too. I, I thought, uh, I thought it wasn't available for cameos too, so that was pretty cool too. So how that um, there's multiple or just one one type of cameo fatality for, for each character? Each cameo has uh, one fatality, mm. and it's normally uh, an updated version of like a classic one that mm. you've seen before. You know, the Jack's getting really big mm -hmm. was something we did in Mortal Kombat 3. Mm -hmm. Sonya's kiss was something from Mortal Kombat, the first Mortal Kombat. Yeah. And, um, you know, Kano's heart rip and all that stuff. Last quick thing to mention about the cameo characters is that some of the characters you can actually hold their send out button along with the direction that you're trying to use and some of them will actually charge up an attack to be more powerful. In terms of game modes confirmed so far, we will have a campaign of some kind, but it's not confirmed if it's going to be how it's been in the past three Mortal Kombat or something different like Conquest. Offline towers seem to be back as well, and along with that we know the crypt will not be in the game, but the unlocks will have an entirely new way of being, well, unlocked. They have yet to name drop the mode as of yet, but if I had to guess, it would be some sort of challenge minigame mode, kind of like what they did with the towers in MK9 with 300 levels. The only other way I could see stuff being unlocked besides the crypt and the minigame I mentioned before is they do conquest and around the actual open world map and stuff, they have chests that you can do kind of like they did in Deception, but that's where you would get all your alternate costumes, different colorways, concept arts, fatalities, etc. And you would have to traverse the world and find all of them in order to get everything available. Along with this, Ed Boon also revealed motor combat, puzzle combat, and chess combat would not be a part of the game as well, sadly. Now let's get to when we can actually play the game. The game comes out September 19th, but you'll be able to play 5 days early if you have the premium or collector's edition of the game. If you pre-order the game, you get to play in the beta in August, no date specified as of yet. The game will be on Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5, PC, and somehow Nintendo Switch. The game will have a standard edition for $70, a deluxe for $110, and a collector's running for a whopping $250. If you can get your hands on it, that is, as they are already sold out at all the major retailers. If you still want to try and get it despite the fact though, I'll link a video in the description as to methods on how you could possibly still purchase that edition for the game if you're interested. That is everything we know so far about Mortal Kombat 1. If I miss something, please let me know in the comments down below. I've been doing a bunch of research and seeing almost every piece of information on the game that came straight from gameplay, interviews with Ed Boon, and playtesters alike. Guys, a lot of the information was thanks to a lot of other content creators, interviews that content creators did, and information from various blogs and news snippets as well. I will be posting all of the content creator channels in the description below of this video. Please make sure to show some love to them and check out their channels, consider subscribing to them as well, because without their knowledge and interviews, this video would just straight up be not possible. Alright, now that we have all the explanations out of the way, I have a couple of questions for you guys. Who do you want to see make it to the main and cameo roster character slots? Do you like what you're seeing so far from Mortal Kombat 1? And finally, are you excited for the new entry in the franchise? Let me know in the comments down below. If you liked the video or found it at all informational or entertaining, please consider leaving a like and subscribing as I will be keeping up with Mortal Kombat as I'm super hyped to finally get my hands on the game and learn as much about it as I can. And of course, I will be sharing everything I know with you guys with new videos and updates and eventually gameplay when I get access to the game. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you guys next time. Peace.